Ricky Trucker in the building. Yeah, yeah. Ricky Trucker, TikTok song. What's going on with you? Nothing much on my way to my last drive. All right. So I appreciate you coming on and uh, chopping it up with the lockout men. Thank you very much. So this is what we're gonna do. We we gonna we we gonna start we gonna start it off like this. Why don't you go ahead and uh, tell me a little bit about yourself? Uh, you know where you from, where you came from, where you grew up at, and all that other good stuff. Okay. Well, I think I go by the Ricky Tucker, but my name is Shelby with a V, not a B. Um, I'm from a small town called Burrow, Louisiana. Um, you know, with the truck driving stuff, I kind of just wanted something different. I wanted to make more money, but I wasn't educated about the trucking industry at all. I just kind of hopped into it. And, you know, I'm just a social media type of person. So I wasn't into TikTok at the time, but I was, you know, into my other social media. Okay. And I just started being myself, of course, and posting, posting me cooking in my truck. And I'm guessing, you know, just me showing another side of trucking. Well, um, well, let's just. So- Let's 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 talk about your let's talk about your roots there for a minute. So you you from okay. uh you from Louisiana, <laughs> you know, you down in the yes. down you from New Orleans or where were you from? Um, it's a small town called Burroughs, Louisiana. It's uh, like an hour and like fifteen minutes from New Orleans. Okay. Yeah, it's a small town. It's a small town. Born and raised. Yes, born and raised. It's, uh, I usually say I'm from Morgan City because it's bigger. People are a little Morgan City before they're on the railway. I'm from Maryland. So how far are you from New Orleans? Like a highway 15 minutes. Oh, okay, okay. That's what's good. Yeah, That's what's not good. Far at all. all right. <laughs> so of course the tragedy a couple of years ago happened down in uh New Orleans, Louisiana, because of the mm-hmm. the levees broke and everything and kind of left you guys in right. dis- disarray. Uh, where were you when Katrina hit? Um, I was young at the time, but I know that we had went to Texas, I think. Uh, my dad has a sister that stays in Texas, and usually when the hurricanes are hit, we just head that way. All right, so y'all, so, so y'all wasn't, y'all wasn't there when, when, when the hurricane hit. No, we weren't, and uh, we weren't affected either. You know, it, it didn't really get too bad where I'm from, but, you know, it was bad for a lot of people down south. So so, so the area or where you lived at, it didn't it didn't affect you guys? Y'all, y'all didn't lose anything or nothing like that? No, Mm-mm. we didn't lose anything. You know, they have, you know, tree branches on the ground, stuff like that. I know certain people may have had like trees fall in their house, you know, you know, small things like that, but it wasn't nothing huge like, you know, a flood or anything like that. How old was you when, when Katrina hit? I, I don't I forgot what year it was, but I know I, I was young. I, I was in elementary school. Fuck. You serious? Mm-hmm. Yes, I'm 23. Damn. Damn. So I'm, I'm I'm surprised you even remember Katrina. Oh yeah, I mean it was it was big for Louisiana. You know, a lot of people got affected by that song. So and it's something that people always talk about when they hear Louisiana. So yeah. Yeah, they you know they they did so many they did so many stories that came out. Uh, you know, they was talking about how serious it was. There was. There was kind of like bodies floating in the water and how, you know, how yes. the government didn't care about you guys. And and one of y'all and, and one of y'all amusement parks to this very day has been devastated. I, I've seen way I've seen a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of uh, videos on Six Flags, uh, New Orleans and, and, and the aftermath of the. Uh, of the uh hurricane and everything like that um right so do you still live in Lu- do you still live in uh louisiana oh uh, yes i do i had moved 
um, about two years before I decided to try, I had moved to uh, Central Louisiana, which is kind of like in the middle, to a place called Alexandria. I stayed there for almost two years, and uh, I was up there by myself. I had family that lived maybe like 30 minutes away, but that was it. And, uh, you know, I had gave everything up to start driving. So I gave up my apartment and everything, and um, I wasn't about to take somewhere I wasn't staying, and it just seemed so. I moved back with my dad. Okay. So how, how, how is it how, how is it living with family? Like, I mean, is it is it better as a truck driver living with family? Um, I, I would say so, you know. For me, you know, I don't have problems. I never had, you know, problems at home with my dad. He didn't pay no bills or anything like that ever. Um, he's real amazing. So I honestly never even moved anything back to the house. I moved everything to my storage. And when I go home, you know, I go, I stay over there. But I never actually moved back in. But if I have to say I stay somewhere, I stay with that. And I be on the road so much. I barely, I honestly haven't went home a lot. Um, I just see a lot of my fam when I go home and, you know, make sure I see my mom and my dad and I get back on the road. Now, I've been following you on TikTok for quite a while. And I've seen a little bit of your uh, earlier, uh, earlier uh, careers. So what you what was you what was you doing before you got into trucking? Um, just working within the fast food industry. Uh, I started working when I was in high school. I was sixteen. I started working at Wendy's. I worked there for three years, and then I um you know I was ready to leave that, and I had um with Domino's and working at Domino's. You know, I found out you can really you can really have Domino's. There's a lot of opportunities. Um, you know, and I was in management too, so that's how I got in management at Domino's, and I learned a lot there. It was good. I, I made that was the most money I made at the time. And it um, it kept me, you know, it kept me going. It was cool though, but I just needed something different, and I kind of felt like I was too locked in. Um, but like it was always, we started dealing with um, people. I come to work with sharp handed, so I'm having to pick up all these pieces and a manager. And um it was again yeah, really stressful. Okay, okay, that's what's up, Domino's. Okay. But you say you you made uh you, you, you made a little bit of you made a little bit of bank at Domino's though, but you kinda got tired of it because yeah. of, of being short handed. How was you with was you with Domino's right. during the pandemic or 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 no? Yes, I was. And, how, know, how, how did the, how, how did the pandemic affect? Well, I, I know how it, how it affected the food industry, but how did it affect mm-hmm. you as you know as as the as a manager that was working there? Honestly, it, it really didn't affect me simply because like um, people people always want to eat, and Domino's motto is like. First to first to open, last to leave. So if we had hurricanes, if we had anything like that, they would be the ones to be open. So you know, I never went without a job. My hours actually, I had more hours, more overtime than I did before. So you know, it really didn't affect me. Did you get paid a salary, or you got paid uh, hourly? I got paid hourly. Oh, so you was one of the and lucky. Yeah, you you was one like of the. Dollar. So you was one of the lucky ones to get paid hourly when 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 you start getting more hours. Yes. Yes. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. So how long you been how how long you been driving and what made you decide to get into the get into the truck? Well, I've been um I've been driving solo since September. Um I got my CDL in of March and last year, twenty twenty one. And, um, you know, I had a friend, basically, like, you know, a friend that I was surprised and talked to all the time. And I would tell him, you know, I was kind of getting miserable with my job and how my life was going. I felt like I was only going to work, going home. And I was complaining to him. And he wanted to drive trucks. And he, he then told me about it. But he had finally put it in motion. And he was like, hey, like, I know I'm about to go to um, the school. You know, I got a job. They're going to train me. And, um, you know, I'm already have a job once I get my CDL. So I'm like, oh, like, you know, 
I want to try that out. And he was like, yeah, I'll send you the link. And he sent me the link. I applied and it's literally just like that. I had no knowledge. I didn't do no research. I just did it. I just hopped into it. <laughs> so you just hopped into it because old boy was into it, huh? Mm, well, no. <laughs> For money. I knew that from I, I know myself. You know, anything I set my mind to, I can do. So... You know what I'm saying? Like, I knew I was going to be able to learn how to drive these stuff, how to back these stuff up. I knew that because I know me. But, you know, I knew it was going to come with some hardships, and it really did. So you team, so, all right, so you, 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 you been with Stevens Transport ever since. You Did you get your license through them, or did you go to a school to get them? Yes. Uh, they sent us to a school. Um, they starting to get a lot more schools open within um the US. So they try to keep you in the state that you're in, like your license is based out of. So they they do have a school in Louisiana, it's C V A and Shreveport Jews and Robin Academy and they have like their own Stevens has like their own little side with it. So Stevens has their four week program to go to school with the C V L and as soon as you're done, you get the C V L they'll send you to Dallas to the main yard to so start your training. All right, so you uh, so you you been with Stevens for over a year. Have you fulfilled the contract with him yes. so that you don't have to, so that you're not obligated to him no more? I think I have a couple more months simply because I had um I had to go home in the middle of my training, and I had went home for two months, and I kind of was still undecided about what I wanted to do. Did I want to stay with them? Did I even want to drive trucks? But, um, you know, I, I told that I didn't want to continue with them and drive plus I went back and I had to start over. I was considered a rehire at that point. So I think my contract kind of like, you know, Re started. Reset it. Reset, yes. Okay, okay. So what, what was your experience, you know, what was your experience with a trainer uh, at Stevens? Obviously, you still with them, so... Was the experience <laughs> was the experience with your trainer good? Did you you finish out with one trainer? You had to switch trainers. What was your what was your experience uh, with the trainer? And was you with a female or was you with a male? Um, I was with all male trainers. I had three different male trainers. Um, Damn, three different had... three different male trainers. <laughs> oh, oh shit! What what what, what happened? What what happened? <laughs> Why you went through three different male trainers? I that. <laughs> well, he taught me a lot to begin with because I had no knowledge of anything besides moving on the city of So, like I said, I had to go home because basically the training pay is really low. You know, the whole time you're in school, being with CDL, you're not getting paid. So, whenever you do, and you also have to support yourself out there. So, whenever you do finally go to Dallas and you start the process, at that time it was lower. I mean, they went up with the training pay, but I was only getting paid like $350 a week and my bills were way higher than that. So I had to make a sacrifice, you know, I'm going to stop my training and go home and, you know, make some more money because I had door dash on my phone. So I was able to go home and door dash and I was making more money door dash than I was with the training pay. And I need to, you know, pay my bills, pay my rent, make a decision if I want to stay in apartment or not. So that's how all of that happened. All right. So that so that was the first trainer. What happened with the second and third? What'd you say? I said that was the first trainer that you, you know, that you had to get off the truck because of the pay and everything. And I and I very much understand that, but you know, because training mm -hmm. You know, during that time in training, you're going to have to sacrifice, you know, you're going to definitely have to sacrifice the pay because the pay is not there when 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 you're out training. But what happened? What right. happened? What happened with you with the second and third trainer? Well, you know, um, they're short handed with training right now. I'm actually about to become a trainer. They don't have a lot of female trainers. So a lot of times um, males are trained to cross train or whatever. So that's why, you know, a lot of females get male trainers. But um, one of my trainers were was um, regional. He had, like, a regional route. And then my other trainer was over the road and was he was transport. 
you have to get your West Coast qualifications and your East Coast qualifications. My second training, which was really my first training when I came back, he only did the East Coast, and I need to get my West Coast qualifications and my West Coast mountains. So that's why I went three weeks with him, and then I went the other three weeks with my last training. Okay, so th- this sounds <laughs> this sounds interesting. So. <laughs> so Stevens wanted you to get all four corners of the map down pretty much because yes. from th- is this what I'm hearing that they, they wanted you to cover all the states that you may or may not be going through, but they at least doing your training. They wanted you to hit all of the East coast and all of the West coast. Well, most of it, like they always tell us, you know, you might not hit all of the states different. And even in training, you don't. But they want you to at least get experience on the West Coast and the East Coast. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so, that's cool. And your mountains on both sides. Okay, okay. So, so when when you first started driving, of course, you know you you trying to get a feel for the truck. How 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 mm-hmm. was how how was your feelings like after you got out of school? You got with your trainer. What you got behind the seat? How did you feel the first time you got be- behind the seat of the truck? I literally forgot everything I I learned. <laughs> I was so nervous. Like, I was so nervous. I forgot everything. My last trainer, you know, um, we had became friends to where he was like, you know, you can call me anytime I help you. And he was there for me. And I'm so thankful for him because without him, I feel like, you know, I would have been so messed up. But I called him for everything. He helped me. And then he kind of was like, okay, you can't keep calling me because you have to learn on your own. Like, you got to pick it up on your own. So, you know, I had him in the beginning to help me out when I needed, when I still had questions. Because you you might be in training in all this time, but when it's still so different not having that person right on side of you that you can ask questions to. And now you're by yourself and you're like, dang, what was this? I forgot how to do this. And, you know, we have to send in paperwork when we're done with loads and all that. So, you know, some trainers don't even teach you that. But they have some good trainers out there that do, and I had good trainers. So, so out of all the three, out of all the, all three male trainers that you had, have any of them tried to push up on you? Um, honestly, my first one did a little bit. He um, he was doing too much, and I had to tell him, you know, I mean, you keep your hands to yourself. Like, you know, he was. I wore shorts one day, and he's like, "Oh, you got a tattoo?" And he touched my thigh, and I'm like. I would I, I, I would imagine that was that would be kind of creepy like bruh like you know the the the, the hand touching the, yeah. the 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 face touching I mean how did I mean how did that make you feel when 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 he started doing that I mean you 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 would have felt definitely some kind of way about that right Yes, I, I did feel some kind of some type of way, but I talked to him about it, and you know he he stopped, he stopped. But you know we had other problems on the truck too because you know you're in somebody else's space for two weeks to six weeks or more. So it's like you know what I'm saying. Y'all have to learn how to respect each other's boundaries, and you're also on their truck, so you also have to respect them too. You know their their space, but um, but that situation, you know, I, I told him about it and he fixed it. But it was for things that was going on with him as a trainer that made me scared to go to my next trainer because I didn't know how they were going to be. Because he was screaming at me like, I'm new. This is my first time driving for real in the 18 wheeler. And you're screaming at me if I'm not doing something right. And, you know, um, just kind of talking to me in a disrespectful way. And we got, and then he didn't want to shower. He was trying to make me go three or four days without showering. I'm a woman. You know what I'm saying? So it was, it was a mess. So, so you didn't, so, I mean, you, of, of, of course, after the conversation that you had about that, you, he, he, he pretty much backed off and, and, and respected your boundaries. But I mean, I mean that, I mean, that would have been 
that that right there would have been a red flag for me to to call my fleet manager and be like uh bro's kind of handsy with me can you get me off this truck you 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 didn't go you you didn't go that far and he he no. did he did he did eventually backed off on you on uh on the advances though yeah he did he did and you know out here like i try to tell people on TikTok, you know, I try to give advice and I try to tell them, you know, try to stick it out if you can. Now, with that type of situation, everybody is different. Some people can't stick out longer. Some people just like, I'm automatically, I'm, I'm getting off your truck. But there's it's already limited. I already waited to get this trainer. You know what I'm saying? And I heard a worse story, a way worse horror story that females that told me about certain trainers, you know what I'm saying? Within different companies. So it's like, you know, it wasn't a big deal to me, but when I told myself he did, he became for himself. And, you know, after that, it was just other things that was bothering me, but I was still thinking it out because I'm, I'm trying to look at the bigger picture. I'm trying to get in this truck and drive solo so I get this experience. So when you got when you got into trucking after you got out of school, what do you wish that the, that the school taught you, but you had to learn it? You you had to learn on it the hard way. Honestly, uh, that's it. Like they did, they did a great job. Uh, that's school that I would recommend to anyone. They did an awesome job with teaching us at the school. Um, you know, at CBL school, you don't really learn a lot of the hands-on things. Uh, especially not in that program because before we program, so they kind of teach you like the the most basic they can, but in a thorough way. So, and they did a really, really great job. And once we got to the yard, you know, that's when they taught us a lot more and going out with the painters. All right. So, of course, I've been following you on TikTok for quite a while, but you say you've been in, you, you've been in the social media aspect for, uh, for a good minute. You know, you're, you're only what, 22. So you're a millennial. So, of course, you know, yeah, you're, you're, or 23. So, of course, your, your outlet is going to be more social media driven. <laughs> When TikTok came around, right. you you was already driving. Uh, when you got on TikTok, why did you why why you know why did you choose TikTok for your platform of choice? I was using TikTok, but I wasn't using it for a purpose. You know, I just kind of was doing a little trends, and I was getting like two three likes. You know, it wasn't. Oh, uh, I wasn't taking it serious. But I made a video. I think it's pinned on my page now. I made a video. Um, on my Snapchat, and I was like, man, I'm going to vlog, like, once I get in my own truck, I'm going to vlog, and I'm going to, you know, show y'all how it is, and whatever, and that's really what I did, you know, I just started posting myself, I didn't, I wasn't on the trucker algorithm on TikTok to see how other truckers were doing it, so I'm going to kind of do it like that, it was really all me, everything I did was all me, being myself, and you know, I am a little, so I know how to I can't even say that word. <laughs> I do know how to, you know, work the media and edit really good. I'm really good at editing and stuff. So I just put all that in one and I started making my videos. I made my videos cooking and that was like my first cooking video that went viral. And all my videos that really went viral was just cooking in my truck. But, now, you know. Now, uh, now with TikTok, you you know, I'm not a fan of TikTok. Uh, you know, I I, I do minimum, <laughs> I do minimum content on TikTok. But for but for women, women truckers, it looks like it's 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 the explosion for you guys. But you had some issues with with TikTok. So before we talk about those issues, you uh, help me understand because you you made a video of you cleaning out your truck. Was there at one point that you was quitting Stevens or they was giving you another truck? What what was going on in that particular video? Um, in that video that actually before that uh clip, I saw a live video that I was on, you know, TikTok Live and I had just kind of broke down crying because you know, I have my days out here, I'm away from home, I'm away from family. You know, and other little things start bothering me. And, you know, I'm realizing I'm out here so much, you know, my hair not done, my nails not done. Um, I'm gaining weight because I'm, I stopped cooking and I told myself to eat fast food again. And, you know, I just wasn't really happy with myself. And I know I can, you know, do different things. So I'm just expressing myself and I'm crying. I'm not even looking up on my face. 
on my, you know, TikTok Live, and I looked up, I had like a thousand something viewers, and I usually don't have that many on my live. But they were all giving like encouraging words, and you know, that next day, I was like, you know, I need to make a change. So some of the stuff I had on my truck, you know, I, I don't want it no more. I was just throwing stuff away and getting stuff, stuff out of my way. And, you know, just starting to change a couple things up about myself that I want to change while being out here because I'm still trying to learn how to maintain being a woman and also being out here, you know, away from home. Okay, okay. That's what's up. That's what's up. So you just basically just, just kind of like having a ha- have an epiphany and having a change on how you want the rest of your trucking journey to go. Right, right. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. So how has TikTok been helping you along that route, though? I love it. It helps me so much with networking with people. You know, um, there was a girl I watched, um, like, maybe like two days before going to truck driver school. I started watching YouTube videos. And I um, seen a YouTube video of a female trucker. Um, and I ended up seeing her on TikTok. And me and her, you know, we went live together. And I have a number, you know, we talk. And there's a couple other female truckers and, and male truckers that I have met through here that, you know, they give me good word or they give me good advice. And it just they help me out a lot. And it's giving me exposure to where I'm in different states. And people like, are you that girl from TikTok? You know what I'm saying? Or they're telling me. You know, you helped me, you inspired me to to come into the trucking industry. And that, that sounds amazing. Have anybody from TikTok try to push up on you? Of course they have. That I'm making that happen for me and putting a name out there for myself. No, nah, that's that's what I'm saying. Have any other men? Well, of course they have. You're a female, so what? <laughs> what? What female on TikTok has not been pushed up on? So they come up in your they, they they come up in your comments. They come up in your DMs. Have you have you gave any have you gave anybody any play from from TikTok? Yes, I have, and it's been a disaster. So I don't do babies from TikTok or trying to meet or anything. No oh, more. Disaster. What happened? <laughs> Do tell. <laughs> oh, well, there was only like two people. And after that, you know, it but, was. Wait, 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 wait rookie, there. rookie, wait. <laughs> Throughout a sea, through, throughout a sea of dudes that's coming at at you in your in in your comment session, especially in your comment session, because with TikTok, mm-hmm. I think TikTok, the only way that you can connect with one another if you guys both follow each other. Uh, so right. majority, so majority of them is is coming through to to you through your comment session. Throughout I'll a sea, through my, um, throughout a sea of Instagram. Oh, okay, they coming through that now. It's easier to get at get get at you in the Instagram. They can DM me on there, right? Right. So throughout a sea of dudes that's coming after you, how do you <laughs> manage to at least you said two? So how do you manage? To at least get two of the dudes that you're inter that that you could possibly be interested in out of a sea of dudes that just coming in after you. How is that? They call my attention. That's just that's just me. You really have to catch my attention. It don't matter how cute you are, you know what I'm saying? You you have to catch my attention. And they they both call my attention. So um, you know, we, we talk and they both separate occasions, they both wanted to take me out. I was coming to their city. And these are truck drivers that were like, to where they drive through it during the weekend, our home on the weekend. So they want to take me out. I said, yeah, you know, we're talking up to the day, on the day, and they both flaked on me. And I'm like, how are you going to do me like that? So after that, I'm like, this is a disaster. I don't want to do it no more. Wait, they, so I'm wait, not wait, 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 wait. So you, you take the time you say, "Hey, bruh, I'm 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 in your city. I'm in I'm in Chicago. I'm in Illinois. I'm in Ohio. Where you at? Pull up on me." And they they ghosted you. Yes, like all, I don't, all I don't that time, I all, all that scared. time. Wait a minute, all that time conversating. Ha- have y'all yes. talked on the phone? <laughs> yes, FaceTime and everything. Okay, FaceTime really different situations. Yes, it's really two different situations, but it's one of them was a compulsive liar, and it was a female. Because I am about to say, 
So one of them were, was a female, the other one was a man. Now, this man, we were on the same highway. I don't know if you remember or anyone remembers where I posted a video of this man blowing my doors off because he flew past me. Right. But that was me and his first time meeting. And, um, and you know, we were on the phone at the time, so that's why you couldn't even hear the sound in the video. So we had both stuff that, uh, some stuff that was coming up, and, you know, we met, we hugged, and we just talked, you know, um, for a little bit, like not even 30 minutes, because I had to get back on the road. So that weekend, I had, uh, I had got stuff in North Carolina, and that's when his home time was, and, you know what I'm saying, he wanted, to, he told me, I want to take y'all a date, I tell everybody I love seafood, and the key to why the key to my heart is to feed me. I love food. So they both were supposed to take me on seafood day. And he just did not message me at all. Like, I'm, I messaged him twice. After that, I left it alone. But I'm not about to blow you up. And, you know, it was the same thing with the other girl. But um, he, it was a mess with her. She just lied about a lot of stuff. And I caught her in a lot of lies. Wait, and I was wait, wait! A, fe- a, 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 a female was lying to another female in a relationship. To me, yes. Mm-hmm. Oh my god! So, That's so you, one. so, so you, <laughs> so, so you're open to both. So you're open to both sides of the relationship. Yes, I am. How do you feel? Mm-hmm. How, how do you feel about poly- poly- polyamory? So you been so of course you on both sides again you on both sides of the relationship. How, how mm-hmm. who who do you who do you choose to date? Who do you cha- choose to date more, women or men? Oh, men, honestly, yes. Oh, but my okay. first real relationship was like six years on and off with a female. So you know that was all I knew for a long time, and then so I still was interested in the men. So Ricky, I, I I need to know, I, I I need I need to know my 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 curiosity got the got got the best of me right now. Who <laughs> okay. who 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 does it better downstairs, <laughs> men or women? Oh my gosh! And honestly, I I don't know because then I don't, I don't even know. I don't know. My ex girlfriend, I'm not gonna lie, she was the bond dot com. And she has done me better than men has, but not all men, you know what I'm saying? So it really just depends on if you got it or if you don't. That's all I get for. Do you now? Let me ask you this. Uh, you know, when you <laughs> when, when you were from now, you 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 had your experience with 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 the woman and everything. But when when a man when a man you know goes down and 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 try to do the do and he's not he's not doing it right do you do you help him out along the way be like yo bro I, I need you to slow down I need you to move it over to the side I need you to open it up you know do do you give them directions as far as as far as taking care of you um I've only done that one time. And I think it's just because I felt open enough with that person. But other than that, I'd just be like, uh, let's go do the next thing. Because <laughs> I don't even waste my time with that. Oh, like, my God. <laughs> You'll be like, stop. <laughs> We're done. Yeah. <laughs> We're done. Yeah, honestly, I mean, I don't have time for that. <laughs> oh, my God. You'll be like, stop. We're done. We're done. Stop. Mo- it, yo, next. Next, come on, come on, yep. don't don't even tr- come on. Next, yeah, next. <laughs> I wish I had a sign that said next because I will hold it up. So you, so again, like I said, so you 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 open to either you you open to either male or female in 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 a relationship yes. or anything that any anything that choose your fancy. Yes, I am. 
Okay, that's what's up. That's good to know. Guys, <laughs> ladies, yo, 20, 23 <laughs> years old right here, rookie trucker, been in, the, been in the game for a year. You know what I'm saying? Y'all don't even have to worry about trying to try to make her happy because she makes her own money, y'all. There she is right here, man. Yep, um, always have my own money. Uh, TikTok, man, you, 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 you got banned on, on, uh, one of your, on one of your pages. What happened? Man, I, I don't know. I don't even remember what I posted. Something I posted, um, got taken down and then they were like, yeah, we're banning you for this many amount of days. And I, I got banned so many times. They were like, you know, your page is in view only mode. So I couldn't like nobody's stuff. I couldn't comment on nobody's stuff and I couldn't post single live nothing all to do with you but i already had a backup page so i went to my backup page and i was like i'm about to just make this my main page but it just wasn't doing numbers like i wanted it to because i'm so used to a certain thing so i was getting aggravated and when i got my page back uh i didn't appeal they finally gave me my page back and i'm just trying not to get banned no more you, do you think do you, do, like do you six, think seven, tic, do you think TikTok does that just to just to slow your pace down? Because I I hear yes. that from I hear that from a lot of uh a lot of TikTok creators, especially some you know some that's trying to build their pages, and you know it mm -hmm. seems as though that TikTok messes with you know messes with the black creators and try they to slow, and try to slow them down as far as you know is as far as building a page instead of messing with the creators that got like millions of followers and all like that. It seems that they more, right. they, they more, they more lenient towards them. They're way more lenient. Yeah. They're more they lenient. Naked, like, like damn they're naked. And you know what I'm saying? They don't ban none of their stuff, but I pulled something on the urge of that. And they're taking my stuff down for sexual nudity. Like what? Or how about, or how about, reacting to a video that's still up but yours is down because of bullying and hara or bullying and harassing but the right. original but that's, the original clearly what happened with me yeah but the original video that you stitched is still up though mm -hmm. I, I i don't that's literally what happened to me. yeah I, I don't i don't understand that 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 don't make no sense to me all right so you of yeah. course you got two you got two pages, but you you you're back on your main page making content right. uh, for your right. main page. Um, I see you love seafood. I, I see you love yeah, the boilers. <laughs> hey, that's that's I me. Do. That I that's me all day. Uh, that that's me all yeah. day. I love me some seafood broilers. So we got something in common there. That's what's up. Yeah, I love the uh, I love the seafood <laughs> broilers, man. You you give me. Take me to a good spot that got a good boiler, then we we on. We on right there. I got you. You come yeah. to Louisiana, I got you. Yeah, that you ain't ain't Louisiana known for that though? Yes, that's why I love seafood so much. <laughs> okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. All right, so yeah. so of course you've been driving for, for over a year. We'll we'll have what's yeah. some of the What's some of the states that you 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 think you like driving through, or what's some of the sceneries that you have seen throughout your driving career? Oh my gosh, I love the West Coast. You know, I love seeing the mountains. I'm I'm from the flat land. You know what I'm saying? So seeing that was so beautiful, so different. Um, and then like I like the Northeast too, even with the snow. You know, I it doesn't snow in Louisiana, of course. So the first time I ever see snow, it turned into ice. And we were, everybody was sliding on ice for like four or five days. So this is like real snow. It's, it was amazing to me, you know. And the Northeast, too, the mountains and stuff up there. It's just beautiful. Seeing people live in the hills. Like, y'all actually got houses in the hills. It's beautiful. It's so different. So I love being out here, you know. People be like, you know, oh, why don't you go local? Go local. I don't want to go local. I love being over the road. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. What is you 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 at a truck stop? You know, nice young lady such as yourself. You know, a little 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 thick little thick young thing. You 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 stepping <laughs> out. You know, you stepping out of a big rig at a flying J or whatever, whatever. What's what's the reactions that you that you normally get at at the truck stops? Honestly, I be looking a mess. I. 
I think we're getting on this. I'd be so tired sometimes. I don't you know, play doing my hair or anything. And these men still come at me the same way. It's like, I'm a 20 at the truck stop. So, but then they just, sometimes they be respectful, you know what I'm saying? And I had a man straight up tell me like, you know, why don't you come get in my truck? <laughs> What was your what was your what was your reaction to that one? I cut them out. I'm really good at that. <laughs> that's kind of that that's kind of uh, disre- that's kind of disrespectful. Do you think? Yes, and you know, men men will approach you out here, and not even just in a. I'm trying to give it to you way. They'll approach you on some like get out the way, da da, screaming and hollering at you, and we don't we don't stand for that. You know what I'm saying? A lot of us. We really are going to go off on it. But, um, you know, it's, it's cool. I, I like meeting people here. I think I had dinner with people I just met, you know what I'm saying, and stuff like that. But never to where I'm like, you seeing what truck I'm getting in or I'm coming back to a truck with you, you don't know. No, but it's cool. You know, I'm a single woman, so I'm able to do stuff like that. It's How- cool. How do you feel about some of the how, how do you feel about some of the trucking influencers on TikTok? You 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 think they you you think what they doing is giving a good uh you know, giving a good sight of what trucking is really about out here or do you think they you 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 think they just talking out the side of their neck and just giving it their own narrative? Some of, the, some of the big issues I see, I don't really, you know, see nothing wrong with what they do. I feel like they be giving a different side just like I do, you know what I'm saying? And they be giving advice. Um, there's just some, you know, everybody is on a different path. Like, I try to teach. I feel like I'm a natural born teacher. That's why I was always in medicine. And, you know what I'm saying? I always try to put the next person on in whatever way I possibly can. It might not be the same exact thing that I do, but, you know, I'm one of those people. They have people on TikTok that just want to make their videos. They have people, you know, that teach just like me. I love that, you know, because they have so many people from TikTok that have told me that, you know, I'm the reason that they are going to the truck industry and they know exactly what they need to do. When I came in, I didn't know what I needed to do, but luckily I had a friend that, you know, he did his research and he did the thing to where I'm like, okay. So, yeah, I, I feel like they're doing, they're doing their job. <laughs> you got you 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 got that new that Louisiana accent going on. That's that's awesome. I like that. I, I like that Louisiana accent going on. Um, Thank all right. You. So so for the for again back to TikTok and for for the TikTok mm-hmm. trucking influencers that got like millions of followers and stuff like that. How do you feel? Do you, like I said, do you, do you feel that the, the TikTokers that got like millions of followers or do you think they're like really genuine uh, with their followers, especially if they, if they got millions of followers and they only following, you know, like a little, a, a handful of, a handful of people. What do you, what do you, what do you think about, what do you think about that? I, I honestly, I can't blame them for some of the things that some people be like, you know, this person never messes me back. They never do this. They never do that. But, you know, when you, when you up to that point where you have a million followers, it's hard to keep up. But whenever they can, some of them, I feel like they will, you know, um, like Miss Clarissa, she always. Like, if I come in or something, she might not always catch them, but if she do catch them, she gonna kind of that. She didn't even came to my page and showed love before, but she didn't follow me, you know what I'm saying? And I'm not far enough behind that. At least she, you know, she's seen me. She know who I am. People tag her a lot on my page. So, you know what I'm saying? Some people don't want that high following back rate. So I, sometimes I wish mine was a little bit more down, but I can't help but follow, like, every quick job I see. So, it's just going up. But, you know, um, I feel like once, certain people get to a certain place, they have to start to maintain in their own way. And it's not out of a way of, you know, I'm trying to be bougie. I'm not, you know, y'all below me. Nah, I don't, I don't, I don't do, know nobody on there that give me that vibe. Do you, do you think there's competition in the, in, in the TikTok trucking community as far as, uh, as far as that goes, as far as like, you know, like this person got this many followers. This person got this many followers. I'm trying to, I'm, I'm trying to catch up to you. And do you think there's any jealousy or backlash in, in, in the TikTok sure. community? I mean, I, I definitely do. 
I definitely do. I mean, I I I feel like they do because sometimes I compare myself. You know, I might look and be like, you know, why? If you ever notice, I, I basically compare my page because this is my first time having a high following day. And um, when I did, I see some people have less followers than me and more likes than me. Some people have, you know, the opposite. And I'm like, you know, what are what are they doing? And I'm, you know, I'm kind of looking at what they're doing. But our audience is different. Even though it's, it's both trucking, our audience is different. You know what I'm saying? I might have more females or, you know, um, a lot of people follow me just because I was cooking. And they feel like I'm being healthy, blah, 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 which that wasn't necessarily the point. But, you know, it's just everybody, audience is different. So well, some people don't look at that and they're just like, you know. Okay, okay. Ricky Trucker, everybody. Man. So now that your your TikTok is back up, how, how can the how how can the people find you? Um, you can find me by my name. Um, the rookie trucker, I got two pages, they both say that. So oh goodness. I'm on the wrong way. But um yeah, you can just find my tape on there. Even if you go to hashtag female truckers, you're going to find a couple of my videos on there. And it's somewhere up top, too. Okay. So, you'll find me. Okay. Well, I'm going to hold you to, uh, to, you know, when I get to Louisiana, man. I'm going to hold you to that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Because I love yes, me, I love me some seafood. Bro. You know, you know, I'm, 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 I'm a sucker for seafood, especially the boilers. So yes. that's what's up. <laughs> that's what's up. Ricky Trucker, man, thank you for coming on. I really do appreciate it. You guys know that the best conversation starts here on the Lockout Men Podcast Show. Again, uh, yes. Ricky Trucker, yo, you stay safe out there. Thanks for the time, and I really do appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. There's something in the air tonight. Got a feeling coming over me. I swear that this is that place to be in the water. In the, the water. In the water.